morning everyone once again. My name is Pastor Byrne. I'm here at the Free Gift Gospel Mission in Kingsport, Tennessee today. We are here to love you with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm here with my friend Pastor Brandon of Strong Tower Baptist Church. We stand in need of prayer today. We welcome you to come over and speak with us. If you need a Bible today, let us know and we'll make sure you get a Bible. But we're approaching that time of year to where many professing Christians will celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about for a few minutes right now. As you pass by here today, we welcome you to stop and listen. But we'd like to talk to you about a man who lived a perfect life. He died on the cross of Calvary. He was buried in a borrowed tomb, and on the third day, he arose from the grave. And of course, I'm talking about none other than the Lord Jesus Christ, who came into this world, born of a virgin, fully God and fully man. There's a few verses of Scripture found in the first epistle of Peter that I'd like to read to you today. They are relevant to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and they are important for you and I to hear and understand today. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-5, through 5, the Bible says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Now notice here in these verses of Scripture the writer says Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This does not mean that man has the power to invoke or to call down a blessing upon God because there is none higher than God to be invoked today. And nothing can be added to His blessedness because He is already perfectly blessed. He is perfectly just he is perfectly righteous, and He is perfectly holy. But mankind can bless God by speaking well of Him, by speaking well of His marvelous works, and His grace and mercy, and they can express their thanks toward God in their heart, and in their words, and in their daily lives. Peter is saying, let that God have praise who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and who deserves the praise of every human being for His infinite mercy to the world in its redemption by Jesus Christ. Then it says, according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again this reveals what the writer is blessing God for. He's blessing God for being born again. The spiritual birth where we are quickened by God and made alive by God. And God displays His abundant grace and His abundant mercy in the regeneration of sinners. My dear friends, it is God who is the author of our physical lives and just as Jesus Christ said in John chapter 3 ye must be born again that verse reveals to us that God is also the author of eternal and everlasting life for except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God and then the writer says unto a livelihood Prior to the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, the apostles had a strong confidence that He was the Messiah. 
who would come to redeem Israel. But when they found out that he had died on the cross, it appears as if they lost all hope. This is expressed in the two disciples whom the Lord Jesus Christ walked with on the Emmaus Road after his resurrection. As far as they were concerned, all hope had died with their master on the cross. But hope was revived at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is a lively hope. This is a lively hope. The hope that the writer is speaking of here is a hope that is active. It is a hope that is powerful. It's not mere speculation. It's a lively hope. And a lively hope is not based on dead works. But a lively hope is based on a living Christ. It's a hope that is based on His person. It's a hope that is based on His shed blood on the cross. It is a hope that is based on the righteousness of Christ. A lively hope is not the hope of a dead city. But a lively hope is the hope of a living believer. A lively hope is not the hope of a person who has merely made a verbal profession, but a lively hope is the hope of one who has been made alive by the Spirit. A lively hope is a hope that makes the heart cheerful. It's a hope that cannot be lost. It's a hope that's laid up in heaven for the believer. It's a hope that we must hold to until the end. Then it says, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Why? Because without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, none of us would be able to have eternal life. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the cause of our regeneration as Christ declared His Sonship by the resurrection regeneration is the manifestation of our adoption the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the very foundation of our hope today because He rose again for our justification and our subsequent glorification Many people will celebrate what they call Easter this coming Sunday. But how many people truly understand the true meaning of the day? I'm afraid many people in this world give more credence to the Easter Bunny than they do a risen Savior. And it shouldn't be that way, my dear friend, because it is Christ and His resurrection that is the foundation of all of our hope. When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, it confirmed that what He said was true. And by His perfect life, and by His death, and burial, and by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we all have every reason to be grateful today. We all have every reason to be grateful for the fact that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have eternal life. We have every reason to be grateful today. Christ is alive. Christ is alive. He's not dead. He's alive. And because He lives, ye shall live also if you have repented and put your trust in Him alone. Up from the grave He arose with a mighty triumph o'er His foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. He lives forever with His saints to reign. He arose, He arose. Hallelujah! Christ arose. God created this world and everything in it. He created you and He created me in His image. 
And the God who created this world is perfectly just and righteous and holy. And because He is just and righteous and holy, He must punish sin. That's the only way He could be just and righteous and holy. And the Bible tells us that sin entered into this world. We live in a fallen world. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God must punish sin. And the punishment that God has prescribed for sin, and the Bible is very clear, is an eternity in an awful place called hell. But here's the good news. Christ has come. Born of a virgin, made under the law, that He might redeem them that are under the curse of the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And He came down to this world, fully God and fully man. And He lived a perfect life for 33 years. A life that you and I could not live for 33 seconds. And He went all the way to the cross. Sir, how you doing? Great. How are you? I'm good. My name's Satan. Nice to meet you. Okay. You need Christ, sir. Turn Do I to need Christ. Christ? It's faith and repentance. Ah. Yes. Yeah. You need Christ. Something yes. made up? No, he's real. And you know it. You know he's real, it. sir. Turn to Christ today. Turn to Christ. Christ has come. Born of a virgin, made under the law, and he lived a perfect life from cradle to grave. A life that you and I could not live for 33 seconds. He lived it for 33 years. And He went all the way to the cross. And there, on the old rugged cross of Calvary, He offered Himself as a perfect sacrifice for the sins of many. But He did not stay dead. He did not stay on the cross. He arose from the grave on the third and appointed morning. And he was seen of over 500 brethren before he ascended back to the right hand of the Father where he sits today making intercession for the people of God. And what God requires of you and what God requires of me and what God requires of all people is that we repent and believe the Gospel. That we turn aside from sin and look to Christ and Him alone. Christ is our only hope. When we stand on Judgment Day, we will not stand before a professor. We will not stand before an intellectual human being. We will not stand before a celebrity. We will not stand before an earthly judge. But we will stand before a righteous and holy God. And you need to be ready. Turn to Christ, my dear friend. Repent and believe the Gospel. If you're here today and you are saved by the grace of God in Christ alone, we rejoice with you in your salvation. You are our brother or sister in the Lord. But if you don't know Christ in a saving way, the call goes out today. Repent and believe the Gospel. Look to Christ alone. And when you look to Christ for life and you turn away from sin, you find Jesus Christ to be a perfect Savior. He's a perfect Savior today. If you don't know Him, my dear friend, look to Christ and Him alone. He is a perfect Savior. God bless you all today. If you need a free Bible, we have free Bibles. If you need prayer, we are very approachable today. We're here to love you. We're not here to provoke a riot or antagonize or, or call names or anything like that. If you need prayer, come on over and talk to us. We'd be happy to meet you today. God bless you and thank you for listening.